Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the frameworks available to you for processing your real-time data. Real-time data is data that is generated and delivered for immediate processing from sources such as sensors, mobile devices and applications. Before we look in more depth at the processing frameworks available to you, what we're going to do is take a more in-depth look at real-time data. I want you to be able to look at your real-time data uh, and understand it and characterize it because that will help you choose the right framework for processing it. So there's two main types of real-time data. There's event data and stream data. Event data, this is uh, self-contained messages, typically low volume. These are generated when a well-defined condition arises. So this could be a one-off event like um, uh, you know, a, a river flood triggering an event into a system, um, a vehicle incident, um, whereas stream data on the other hand, this is when your data source is uh, it's a continuous flow of data, it's unbounded which means it has no discrete beginning or end. So this could be a sensor recording temperature, uh, a sensor recording position, something like that. Now typically these data records are small in size, um, but the complexity arises in designing your architecture to handle the data volumes, as these volumes can be extremely high. So here's a comparison between event data and stream data. Let's have a look at an example. Uh, so event data, let's have a look at the river flood example. So if you have a river, uh, you may have a sensor high up on the river bank, and that sensor detects, maybe it's kind of a buoyancy, has buoyancy, and it detects when the river reaches that level. And when the river reaches that level, a message is sent into the infrastructure to, to warn that the waters reach a dangerous level. Now that, that trigger, that event, it only happens once. Compare this to stream data. With stream data, you may have a sensor actually located in the river um, that's giving real-time information on flow, um, you know, the depth of the river, things like that. And this, these sensors are sending data back continuously uh, into the infrastructure for processing. So you can see very, very different volumes of data. One of them is, is very, very infrequent and, and low volume, and the other stream data is, is continuous. You need to look at your real-time data and understand which of these two categories it falls into. So next, let's take a more in-depth look at the real-time processing frameworks available to you, to you to handle these two types of data. So batch processing, well, batch processing can handle event data or streaming data. Um, basically, for either of these two, you would store the data to a database and then you'd run some batching tools against that data. Uh, now, this can be complex for stream data just because of the huge data volumes involved. Um, you might have to use, um, you know, like a big cloud database to store all that data. But it is possible. Um, you're processing the data after it's stored and it, it can be very high latency, you know, minutes to hours. Event processing, now this type of processing framework is obviously related to event data streams. So a job runs immediately in response to an event. This is medium latency, so you know uh, the job isn't running all the time listening, so there is some latency with the, the processing engine coming up online to pull that job. Um, and with this, you can do very complex analysis. So you basically have all of the analysis tools available to you that you have in batch processing. Um, but yeah, you, you're reacting to the event and then you're maybe storing the data. Um, but this, this, this type of framework is very powerful, but it's really suited to kind of um, low volume messages. So, um, you know, back to that example before, if a message comes in um, because there's a flood event in a river, um, the infrastructure would consume that message, uh, processes would start and they would run and then things downstream would happen. Stream processing, um, this is continuously running jobs that produce constant results. And so here, rather than a job starting and stopping, uh, you have um, uh, engines running continuously, listening for the data. So there's no latency in starting the process, um, which means you can get very, very low latency uh, down to milliseconds. Uh, typically, with stream processing, uh, you're connecting to message queues, event streams, um, or or some transactions in another application. You could connect directly to hardware as well, potentially, like to the device. 
compare this to event processing uh, this is more um, you see also message queues for event processing with lower volumes but event processing also supports static uh, static files things like emails arriving files being uploaded webhooks being updated things like that stream processing is better suited to connecting to endpoints that are continually producing uh, events so things like Kafka or even lower level things like TCP IP with stream processing you can only do simple analysis the key thing here is in order to be able to handle these huge data volumes you're doing in-memory processing before the data is stored in your infrastructure because of this in-memory processing um, you have a kind of a um, less tools available to you for doing analysis but you can still do aggregation filtering enrichment geo enrichment with FME uh, proximity analysis and event detection as well so these are kind of the three real-time processing frameworks you need to figure out based upon your requirements and your data characteristics which one's the best fit for you with FME we obviously support batch processing event processing is supported through FME server automations and stream processing is um, through FME server streams so batch processing in conclusion is near real-time often minutes but more likely hours uh, the data is stored and then processed event processing um, each discrete event is handled separately uh, with connections between events being stored in persistent storage so this is good if you have real-time low velocity and then stream processing there is if you have much higher velocity um, and data is processed in this context in memory before storing